there's a lot of young folks looking for ways to retire early. And one of our viewers asked this question today about retiring early, but did not want to live the frugal lifestyle of the FIRE program. So we're going to investigate this question here today. Thank you for watching. This is Richard with Wisdom Investor. We have an interesting question here today. One of our viewers wants to retire early, but they don't want to live a frugal lifestyle. So let's take a look at this question here. I'm a 30 year old female and I make $70,000 per year. I want to retire early about 50 years old, but I don't want to live a frugal lifestyle like they teach in the fire program. Is this possible and how much will I need to save? Okay. It's a great question here for those who are not familiar with the fire program, basically financial independent retire early. So what's the basic structure of the fire program? The fire movement saves between 40 to 70%. Traditional savings says 10 to 15%. Now this can be a very strict lifestyle saving 40 to 70% of your income. Very frugal. The goal in the fire program is to save as much as possible or the number you have calculated to allow you to retire early. And then once you retire, you live off the 4% of this per year for the rest of your life. Okay. What we're going to do in this scenario, we're going to take a look at the $7,000 income, subtract out taxes, insurance costs, FICA costs. And also we're going to do a scenario here where we're saving 20% and 25% and not trying to save the 40 to 70% that the fire program recommends. So let's take a look here at the numbers, 70,000 per year. We're going to try to save 20%. That's $14,000 per year. Taxes, insurance, FICA. I'm just using a, a general rule of thumb here, about 25% of salary. That's 17,500 per year. Take the 70,000, subtract out 17,500 and the 14,000. That leaves about 38,000 to live on 38,000 per year, 3,166 per month living expenses. The goal in retirement in this particular case is to live on 80% of pre-retirement salary. Pre-retirement was 70,000, 80% of that is 56,000. And also we're estimating a lifespan of about 85. We're going to run a quick calculator on this situation and just see what the numbers look like. Here's a calculator that says current Annual income, 70,000, age 30, a retirement age 50, life expectancy about 85, current savings 25, desired income after retirement 56,000. This calculator gives us a figure of, we're going to need to save 15,196 per year, which is about 21% salary. And that's pretty much what our estimate was here is to try and save about 20%. We're going to look at another calculator here that breaks down this situation here, current age 30, expected retirement age 50, beginning contribution about 30. This is going to be real critical here is the investment rate of return. Realistically, to make this all work out, you're going to have to invest your money. And here we have a scenario earning 8%. In these kinds of calculations, that's a little bit on the high side in general. I like to rather use a 6% savings, more conservative. Minimum annual contribution comes out to about 14,000. That's what we're going to do. Maximum is 17,000. That's using 25% savings versus 20. This first one was 20 and current uh, savings 25,000. So using the 8%, it's going to give us a, a total amount we're going to need to save 766,000. That's for scenario one with 20% savings and scenario two is 928%. If we move our calculator here a little bit, if we go down to 7%, 7 percent, seven and a half, you can see this number drops. You're not going to earn and build quite the nest egg on a lower income. So you have to really think about it. If we go all the way back down here to 6%, it's 593,000 here, saving 20% versus the uh, higher amount that we had at 8%, which was 766,000. So in this case, this young lady is going to need to save over the next 20 years. If she uses 20% of her salary, 
making 70,000 or better, she's going to need to save close to $800,000. Using 25% of the salary, she's going to need to save close to $1 million if she's investing this and getting maximum yield from her investment. Now we're going to back test this just a little bit. We're going to suggest here that if she saves 800,000 and she has monthly withdrawals once she retires of 4,660, that's about 56,000. Annual withdrawal increases with inflation, say 2%. Annual before tax, 8%. Again, that's um, earnings. And then she has a tax rate here. This is going, this money is going to last her 22 years in retirement. She needs to get 30 years. Now, one thing we're not calculating in here is Social Security that would kick in after she's 65 and would definitely help out. Now let's look at a scenario where she saved $1 million and she's going to live on 56,000 per year. In this case, the money's going to last over 30 years. And let's just take a look all the way down at the bottom. Even after 30 years, she's still going to have $338,000. And if we'd taken a scenario on this, uh, say 330,000, how long that would that last? That would last another seven years. So a million dollars could last her potentially 37 years. And again, Social Security would kick in at age 65. Now, in this case, this young lady is going to need to really save closer to 25% of her income. Now, she didn't want to live that frugal lifestyle of the fire where they're saving 40 to 70% and living on very minimal circumstances. So 25 is kind of a halfway medium. The traditional savings amount is typically 10 to 15% of your savings. This young lady wanted to work between 30 and 50, retire at 50. The negative part to that would be if you stop working at age 50, you have about 15 more years for you're going to start collecting your Social Security. So you need to make sure you've worked enough units credits so that you can collect Social Security. But ideally, she'd be better off to continue working at least part time and paying into the Social Security system. So when she comes around to 65, the Social Security benefits will kick in. Social Security benefits are also inflation protected somewhat. They do grow. So cost of living can increase much greater than we probably realize. We haven't even talked about medical costs here. Uh, medical costs, you've got to plan for medical costs of increasing. Also, we didn't really talk about buying a home here. Uh, is she going to save a little bit of money and then buy a home? Because you definitely like to have your home paid for by the time that you retire. The other thing is emergency expenses. There's always going to be something come up that's unexpected. So she would definitely be better off saving the 25% versus the 20%. Now she could save the 20% and live on a lower level lifestyle, lower expenses and get by. So a lot of this is be determined by the type of expenses that you live in the part of the country where you live because the expenses typically dictate how much money that you're going to need. So in this case here, the 20% savings, she could definitely get by, but what we would definitely recommend in this case is to save 25% the salary, invest it wisely. You're going to have to invest it into the market to get the 8% return. Even if a return was a little bit less, you'll still come out okay, but you're going to need to learn it to invest in the markets. If you try to just put this money aside in a savings account and earn minimal money market interest, these numbers are not going to work out quite as well. Also in the FIRE program, they're talking about living off 4% for the rest of their life. If you take a million dollars times 4%, that's $40,000 per year. In this case, she's going to be leave, living off of $56,000 per year, probably closer to five, five and a half percent of her savings.